Hey guys, Brian Atlanta Hot Tub Center, Tub Talk 101. And today I wanna to talk about how to maintain your swim spa, how you're gonna maintain it, take care of it. Guys, a uh, swim spa, we can call it a swim spa, but really what it is, is a pool. It does generate some current. Um, it does have some other features that a pool doesn't. One of the biggest ones being that it's an all year around pool that won't cost you a fortune to keep hot, especially when you get up into the good swim spas. And the cheaper ones are, you know, that's up for debate. However, the better ones that are full foam and built and insulated well um, are very inexpensive monthly. So all year round, you can keep this guy at 90, 95, 100 degrees, and it's uh, very inexpensive. All right, so maintaining it, guys. You know, basically, you maintain temperature. This is going to be more on chemicals, right? Uh, but you want to maintain your temperature at a comfortable level. If you're exercising in your swim spot, it's good to maintain around 90 degrees. You know, if uh, you're going to use it more like a hot tub, again, it's not a hot tub, it's a pool, but if you're going to, you know, they do have some seats with some jets, so you can heat it up to 100 or 102. Chemicals act a little bit different in different water temperatures. The warmer the water, um, the quicker the chemicals tend to dissolve and you need a little bit more and warmer water than you do in cooler water. But it's the same thing. You take a test strip, you swipe the test strip, and you line it up on the back, and you want to make sure that your chlorine's in the ideal range. Okay? You want to make sure your alkalinity and pH are in the ideal range. And if your calcium is really, really low, you do want to bring it up some. It doesn't have to be perfectly in range. Here in Georgia, it's not too bad, so we normally don't tell people to mess with it. But if you're in an area or a climate uh, where you've got uh, bad calcium, or not bad calcium, but really low calcium in your water, it's important to first, I would tell you, you need to watch our video on how to raise calcium in water because it can have a chemical reaction. And if it does, it can create like almost a white haze over the entire shell. It'll be a cleanup nightmare. I'll give you one quick tip. Of course, you can check that video out on the channel, but one quick tip is um, a very small amount of calcium creaser goes a long way. Take a five gallon Home Depot or Lowe's bucket, dump yourself just a little bit, just a small little capful, right? Very, very small amount, almost a teaspoon, and mix it up into that five gallon bucket and make sure it doesn't have a chemical reaction, then dump it into your swim spa right test it first and we do this a lot actually when you're maintaining pools not as much in hot tubs but when you're maintaining pools you do that a little bit more where you actually test it in um you know a five gallon bucket first then dump it over into the uh water all right so now hydro pool is a little bit different so we are going to go over uh, how to maintain your hot tub with a hydro pool hot tub um, so for us we've got a pressurized system so it's a little bit different uh hydro pool uses a more commercial type of system um, quite frankly it just goes through a lot more gallons per minute of water with a pressurized system that's why you see all commercial pools pressurized it's going to filter more water uh, quicker and faster and with that being said inside of their pressurized system which i really like for hydro pool is we'll pull this guy up is you got this guy right and you just load this guy up with chlorine tabs and then you turn it right to allow a certain amount of chlorine to drip into the water to maintain your swim spa. Beautiful thing about it is, is we really just don't do anything to this swim spa. Basically, it just maintains itself with this pressurized system with the actual uh, uh, chlorine tabs in the middle of the pressurized system. So we're really able to drip that chlorine into the water and maintain such a large body of water. It's really smart what they've done here because nobody likes to play with chlorine. It doesn't smell good. No one wants to get it on their skin. You know, so this is the best way to do it. And since it's in line, we can maintain the chlorine levels super, super low, right? So a lot of times we don't even have a cover on this guy. And uh, people can come in, they can feel it, they would smell their hands, you wouldn't even smell it because since it's in the water, we can maintain it like one part per million, right? We don't have to spike it, come down and spike it. It's constantly in the water, it's constantly got flow, it's constantly dripping out just a little bit, just enough, right? Keep this water clean and clear and comfortable and enjoyable and all that good stuff. But uh, don't let this guy fool you. Don't let anybody else fool you in general. You still got to maintain your pH levels. No matter what you do, no matter what hot tub you choose, no matter what automatic system you choose, you've got to do that, right? And really, don't go crazy, guys. You don't need. There's multiple different kits out there that you can use, testing kits and stuff. Just get yourself a nice, cheap set of uh, test strips. 
And uh, man, they work just fine. Swipe it in the water. You line up on the back of the test strip. You say, okay, my chlorine's a little low. You know, if you don't have a system like this, grab some chlorine, add it, you know, retest in, you know, 12, 18 hours and, and check it out. You know, same with pH. If it's low, add a little pH up in there, right? Get that guy between that 7.2, that 7.6 range. Get it there in the ideal range or pH down if you need to bring it down. You know, something I want to give you a hint on. If you're really struggling to get your pH to stay in the ideal range, get your alkalinity right. Guys, get your alkalinity right. That's kind of the base there for that pH, right? If you really want to keep that pH in the ideal range, you want to get your alkalinity right. So just something I want to mention. If you're at home right now, you're watching this video, you're like, man, I'm always struggling with the stupid pH. You know, take a look at your alkalinity and see where that's at. You know, calcium, man, if it's super low off the charts, guys, and you're watching this video again, you know, put a little bit in a bucket, mix it in there, make sure it doesn't have a chemical reaction before you dump it in. Um, shock oxidizer, guys, you know, a few times a month, you do want to add some shock oxidizer, and let's talk about that, right? So, um, again, I'm doing this on a hydro pool, right? So it's a little bit different than what you may have, but you can use what I'm telling you on any swim spa, you know, when it comes to getting the chemical levels in the ideal range, right? Um, you know, it's all basically the same. Of course, with automatic systems and stuff like that, stuff like this, you know, you can use less chlorine and different things like that. But uh, with that being said, guys, you know, when you look at the back of that thing and you got your calcium right, you got your alkalinity and pH right, you got your chlorine right, in your swim spa, that water is going to look really, really good. It's going it's, it's to really look, look, look fantastic. Now, you know, again, with the shock oxidizer, the only thing I want to mention here, guys, if you're using your swim spa a lot, your Advent user, you're using it all the time, you know, chlorine gives off a waste called chloramines, right? Because what happens when you get into a swim spa, let's say you get in with five people, that's five people and their deodorant, their makeup, their hair products, you know, all that stuff, bacteria, you know, it goes into the water, right? And all of a sudden the chlorine almost instantaneous, you know, because chlorine is pretty inst instantaneous, right? So it invades and destroys it. You're left with something called chloramines. If you're using uh, 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 bromine, which some people use bromine, then you'll be left with bromamines. And we use shock oxidizer to clean up that waste. So one thing I would like to mention to you, uh, if you're using your hydro pool uh, swim spa, we normally suggest just maintain those chlorine levels really low. But add yourself, you know, two, three caps of shock oxidizer a month or, you know, a cap, cap and a half you know, every week to the tub to kind of keep those chloramines or keep those bromamines, the waste from those sanitizers, kind of keep those at bay to really keep this water, you know, clean and crisp and looking good. Anyway, this is Brian Atlanta Hot Tub Center, how to maintain and take care of your swim spa. Thank you.